Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now today I'm looking at something quite unusual. It's a NES Pi 4 case from Retroflag. And of course it's a case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now the unusual bit about this case is that you can actually insert a 2.5 SSD and you do this by putting it into the cartridge they supply and then inserting this into the case. You therefore have plug and play storage. And I also think they sell the cartridges separately. So you can have a different operating system on each cartridge. And then it's just a simple case of switching between them depending on what you fancy. Now there's also a reset and power button on the case. And they include an aluminium heatsink and fan, which fits onto your Raspberry Pi 4 and takes care of your cooling needs. So guys, without further ado, let's take a look inside. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Okay, so there's a couple of packages in the box. And of course we get the instructions, which on first glance are quite comprehensive. So if you are worried you're not going to be able to put this together, I can confirm these instructions will get you through. Now it also comes with a European power adapter, and a mini HDMI to HDMI connector. Now you also get your regular power supply. It's a 5 volt 3 amp USB-C type power supply. I must say this is one of the nicest cases I've reviewed. On the front of the case we have a reset button and we have a power button. And we have a USB 3.0 port and a USB 2.0 port. And on the side we've got our SD card slot. And on the back we have our two micro HDMI slots and an audio out port. Our USB-C for power and a gig and an ethernet port. Now on the back there's a secret little compartment where you can store all your SD cards. Apparently this was an original feature. There's plenty of room for a few SD cards here. Now one of my favourite features of this case is the cartridge. This is fully functioning. So inside the case you have your SATA connectors. And inside the cartridge you'll be putting in a 2.5 inch SSD. And I've got a 120 gigabyte one I'm going to be using. Now this SATA drive will still be running over USB 3.0, but you're going to get a lot more storage and it should be a lot faster. Now let's take a quick look inside the case. Now you can see here the USB cable that connects your SATA drive to your Raspberry Pi 4. Inside the case you get this bag of parts and they've also included a nice little magnetic screwdriver. And you can also see the thermal paste pads there. Taking a deeper look in the case we can see that we've got our four connectors here that we need to connect to our Raspberry Pi. Now they've also provided a beefy heat sink here. It's made out of aluminium and incorporates a 40mm fan. Now with this hardware you can overclock the Raspberry Pi with ease up to 2GHz. Now taking a closer look inside the case we can see we've got the following connectors. All these barring the fan connector need to be connected to your Raspberry Pi 4. So as you can see I've applied my thermal pads to the relevant areas on the Raspberry Pi 4. And now all that remains is to insert the Raspberry Pi into the case and connect all the connectors. So you can see I've connected the USB 3.0 and the USB 2.0. And I've also connected the Ethernet port now. Just make sure that all the ports are lined up as they are here. Here's a quick overview of the wiring. All that remains now is to connect this plug to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 4. Once that's done, all we need to do is connect the heatsink and fan. Just carefully position this so it's over the thermal pads. Making sure it's firmly seated. Now I've also connected the fan to the fan connector on the case. All that remains now is to screw in the fan into the case. Just carefully position two of the screws into the holes and screw them in with the screwdriver provided. Now the fan will be secured on the other side when you screw the case together from the bottom with the remaining six screws. Now the final thing I need to do is secure the case together with the last six screws. Connect this SATA connector for the SSD into the USB 3 port and then just carefully put the case together being careful not to squash the wiring too much. You should hear it click into place. And then we just screw in the last six remaining screws. So guys, that is the case done. All that remains now is to insert the SSD into the cartridge and screw it together. The other thing we need to do is insert our SSD into the cartridge supplied. This is quite straightforward. We just line it up and then snap it together. And we can screw it together with the screws provided. Once we have the SSD installed into the cartridge, we can slot it into the case where the Raspberry Pi can take advantage of that extra large hard disk space. I'm just putting in the last two remaining screws which holds the cartridge together. Okay, so we're done. In total we have four screws. And it's as simple as that guys. We just slot it in and we've got that extra hard disk space. Okay guys, this is my setup. I'm using the PlayStation 4 controller. I've got RetroPie installed on the SSD. And I'm loading the games from the SSD in the cartridge. So I've already set up the RetroPie image on this SSD and we're ready to play games. So I've rebooted and we're starting up Emulation Station. And you can see it's currently loading up my games. I've got 4 Nintendo games and in all I've got 13 games. Now I'm going to play some PSP games and the first one I'm going to play is Street Fighter. And then after that I'm going to play a few more games and then I'm going to check the temperature of the CPU to see how effective the case is for cooling. Face it 
Next I'm going to give Tekken 6 a go. Now this will be a good test on the CPU temperature as it's quite graphical intensive. So after playing games for half an hour I checked the temperature of the CPU and it was idling around 57 to 60 degrees with an average CPU utilization at about 30%. So in all those are pretty good temperatures for a case with limited ventilation and active cooling. Overall guys, I think Retroflag have done a great job on this case. It's got great I.O. accessibility and it looks exceptional. And the icing on the cake is the SSD cartridge, which is great if you like playing around with different operating systems. You just plug and play. So guys, if you're interested in this case, I've left links in the description below for where you can purchase this. Now guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like and maybe even a subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.